I pretty much knew I was going to be a, I wanted to be a civil engineer. I used to make my parents stop at every bridge on the way. As we would drive from Pittsburgh to Florida occasionally uh, for vacation, I would make them stop at the New River Gorge Bridge. And then if we came to another interesting bridge in another city, I would make them stop. And oh, my brothers and sisters would get all, uh, they would roll in their eyes as we were doing this. But uh, it, it turns out that uh, I'm the only uh, civil engineer uh, in, in the family, but I think um, we have, uh, you know, folks that understand a lot about bridges. <laughs> I mean, the great thing about it, this university is it just keeps getting better and better. I, I keep telling folks we're still on the ascendance uh, as a university, which is a, a great thing. Um, but when I when I showed up, it was a uh, a, a place that, uh, interestingly enough, the uh, you know the, it was advertised as a as the professional's choice. You know, Carnegie Mellon, the professional's choice. And I think what they were trying to convey at the time was that you're going to be prepared to be a person that companies are going to seek. They're going to recognize that you are rigorously educated. And boy, we, we were. Um, I actually, we actually had the statement in one of our classes that said, uh, look to the left of you, look to the right. Uh, only two of you are going to be here when, uh, when, when, when the dust settles. And and um, I don't think it was quite that bad uh, in the end, but um, there was a lot of, uh, of uh, the, the, the retention back in those days was a lot lower than it is today. And it's not because it's gotten any easier. It's because I think uh, the university has put, I think, a lot more support infrastructure in place, a lot more places for students to go to get help, a lot more places for you know, students to find their strengths and find help if, when, when they're, they're challenged. What I think is that a lot of the folks uh, today don't realize is how much nicer it is uh, in the facilities, the food. I, I, I hear that the students uh, um, still are not um, 100% happy with the dining situation. I said this to the students the other night. I said, do you realize when I was here as a student, we had we had one tartan grill in the middle of Skibo Student Union, and then we had a petition and beg and almost protest to get a a salad bar. And I, I said, and today I look around and see what we offer. It's just absolutely uh, um, it, it's such a great improvement. The way I lead is very much influenced by what I saw happening in my education. I mean, while I think about while I was a student, uh, I was seeing the Field Robotics Center come to life. I was seeing the School of Computer Science uh, come to life. I was seeing the you know the Robotics Institute uh, uh, take shape. Uh, you know, statistics got created as a department while I was a, a, a student. Carnegie Mellon was always striving to be avant-garde, was striving to be a setter of, of direction, not a follower. There was a lot of courage being uh, demonstrated at many different levels of the university in terms of decisions that leaders were making. This is another dimension of Carnegie Mellon I, I've always loved, is that people here don't just um, uh, write a paper and put it on the shelf. They want to create a system that they can take out into the real world and, and, and expose it to the real world. You know, I, I know you've talked to other folks in, this, the, the, in the archives and, and uh, you know, some of the folks that I'm thinking of are ones that, you know, that create robotic systems and take them out and, and, and test them. And early on, I, I, I remember while I was a student in civil engineering, I would see uh, the earliest versions of what was called NavLab driving up uh, through uh, Flagstaff Hill on that sidewalk. And it was funny, we would laugh because it was, it was going so slowly you couldn't even tell if it was moving. But it was like a cat that was sneaking up on you in a, in a, in a video where the, you know, the, it would be there and then it would be a little further, so you knew it was moving. And then, like, a, two, a year or two later, it's driving at a pretty good speed up through the thing. And then it had to go at speeds that would be unsafe uh, on that context so they would take it off into parking lots and other places and you'd start to see it really moving fast and that to me is such a metaphor for what Carnegie Mellon overall tries to do with its research. 
they didn't try to just do a toy and they, they really tried to solve the problem of moving and navigating and, and eventually to trying to do it at speed. That's what I, I was being exposed to even in my courses was, uh, was, you know, we were thrown real world challenges where the solution didn't sort of fit into an A, B category. You, it, was, it was a messy uh, solution and we had to deal with it and figure out how to, uh, to do something with it. That plays out in my, my behavior today is that I'm not, I'm not thrown off by challenges. I'm not thrown off by, you know, a, an unusual situation. And believe you me, in this office, uh, I'm encountering unusual situations uh, every day. And, you know, I, th I, I credit the courses I had way back in Carnegie Mellon in, in civil and environmental engineering as, a, as an undergraduate. Very much while I was associate dean that I took on this attitude of being in service that as associate dean, I was in service of the college uh, faculty and, and, and staff and graduate students, more, more faculty and graduate students in my role. And, uh, and then as department head, I, I realized I was in service of now 20 some faculty, uh, 10 staff members and about 200, uh, you know, at the time it was like 250 students. That approach to leadership tends to be much more accepted that people don't want to be led by somebody who they think is in it for themselves or is going to be more autocratic as opposed to being more, um, you know, focused on, on serving this community. Now, one has to be careful because there will be times where you have to make very difficult decisions. Um, and part of leadership is courage to make those difficult decisions. But I always felt it, you'll, you'll get much better support if you take the time to learn from, hear from what uh, your community is expecting and what their thoughts are on different decisions that need to be made, and then you recognize your, your services that you have to make a decision that is uh, in the best interest of the, the, who you're serving, not yourself.